Everyone wants to claim the mantle of Ultimate Vampire, but can you really do that without an army of loyal servants at your back? Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming. Today, we're diving back into V Rising and sharing the secret to thralls within the game. Thralls are loyal servants enslaved by vampires and converted into dutiful subjects. It's a fun feature within the game that can prove to be an incredible boon for you and your clan if you know how to go about accessing it. The first step is to capture a human. To do that, you need to dominate their mind. The only way to do that is by following the singular questline within the game. Eventually, you'll be tasked with breaking the will of a human and bringing them back to your castle. Once you do that, you'll assign them to a servant's coffin. Once fully upgraded, your castle can hold nine servants in total. Remember, each clan member, if you are doing any sort of multiplayer, can also have their own castle heart, which means you could potentially have up to 36 servant coffins between four bases. This is a pretty crucial note, as our next step in this process is where the magic happens. Now, I fear most players will grab one or two humans and then be a bit bored with the system. I'll admit it slows down the pace of the game because you have to escort your target from wherever you capture them all the way back to your base, and then there's a conversion period. The kicker here is that you don't want to capture just any old target. A human stats actually play a huge factor in how valuable they'll be as a thrall. The first thing to consider is the blood type of the unit. Depending on which of the six types the unit is, that'll convert to a specific perk. Additionally, the higher the quality percentage of the blood will determine the base expertise a unit will have once converted. This is also influenced by the gear that you'll give your thrall. In fact, gear is the single most important factor when it comes to boosting the effectiveness of your servant. So don't scrap your old gear, armor, and weapons and all. Just use them to outfit your army of thralls. On top of that, you have two other things to consider when choosing who to dominate. The faction that unit belongs to, and the general type of unit it is. For example, I captured an archer from the Dunley Farmlands. This results in two different perks. The Dunley Farmlands Hunter, which increases the loot secured from the Dunley Farmland missions by 25%, and tracking expertise, which again ties back to the blood type, but reduces the difficulty of any mission with creatures and demons by 100. So to recap, you've got to consider the following, the blood type of a unit, the blood quality of a unit, the faction of a unit, and eventually, this one is dictated by your actions, the gear. A strong baseline capture will make for a more powerful, fully decked out capture, and to really see this in action, we have to head to the throne. From the throne, you'll see the map of Veridoran. From here, you can select any of the major areas available and use your thralls and send them out on farming runs. This is an autonomous process, but needs to be carefully considered to make the most impact. The goal here is to get the most loot with the highest chance for success. Again, all those factors we just talked about feed into the thrall success chances. Once on the throne, select a zone. As you hover over each location, you'll see that they all drop something different. They also all have different difficulties and counter perks that you can line up for a higher chance of success. Once you find the right thrall for the right mission, you have to determine how long you want the hunt to persist. The quicker the hunt, the bigger the risk. The longer the hunt, the less risk. Each hunt will be unique, and based on your thrall and the challenge, you'll need to adjust the timeline accordingly so that you don't end up failing the mission. Once a thrall returns, you'll notice they have a little bag icon over their head. Simply interact with them, take all the loot, and send them off again. Now I want to go back to my original point, that a castle with nine thralls all decked out can be a huge asset to your base and progression, especially if you keep them in line with your own progression. It does take some serious work, but it's one of those labors of love where you exert effort on the front half in order to reap a ton of rewards later on down the road. Truth be told, it's a bit of an overwhelming system, especially if you've never done anything like this before, but it is lucrative, especially if you can organize with your clan and get 36 thralls sent out on missions every day. Anyways, guys, you know we like to keep these videos nice and short, so we'll leave it there. If you have any questions about thralls, feel free to leave us a comment in the section below. And as always, if you find our short and to-the-point guides helpful, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up, and consider subscribing. It's still the single best way to help channels like ours reach new audiences. We also invite you guys to join us on Discord. We've got a great community of over 20,000 members with a special section dedicated just for V-Rising, so check out the link below to join today. Finally, if you like everything we're doing here on the channel and you want to help us out even more, you can do so by becoming a member. For just a few bucks, you're helping Livid and I achieve our dreams of becoming full-time content creators. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.